And then if you remain standing as we uh, read our scripture for today, Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things, all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. And then from Acts 1 to 6? Nope. nope, that's me. Okay. You may be seated. Get, get, get Roy's stuff here. Uh, so he don't want to mess him up when he gets back up here. So, uh, Morning. Before we start, Pastor Todd, would you pray for me, please? Amen. Thank you. So, from Matthew 28, we see, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, and baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Right before Jesus went to heaven, he charged his, his disciples to make more disciples. I told him to go. He said to baptize. That means they're going to be telling new people about Jesus, and, and those people, as they believed, then they would get baptized. Um, they were uh, to present the gospel, the good news. And like I said, as people believed, they would uh, then teach them to observe all that Jesus had told the disciples about. This takes time. Uh, it takes a lot of effort to do this. And sometimes it takes guts. Okay? But this is one thing that he's told us to do that we can't do when we're in heaven. We have to do this while we're here on earth. Once we get to heaven, we're not going to be able to tell anybody about Jesus. Everybody already knows. Okay? Uh, but we're not alone in this. Uh, he said that we would receive power from the Holy Spirit. Uh, in Acts uh, 1, we'll look at that. Uh, the Spirit uh, not only creates opportunities for us uh, to witness to others, but he gives us the strength and the courage to do so. In Acts 1, 68, it says, So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, what will you do at this? Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of sight. He also tells us this in John 14. He says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So not only does he give us the power, but he helps us remember what, what we've learned and, and, and brings those things to our mind. 2 Timothy 4, 5 says, as for you, always be sober-minded, enduring suffering, do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. I know God gives some people the gift of evangelism. That's not what he's talking about here. He's talking about us. We, even though you know, we're not gifted as a pastor or, or even as a teacher or an evangelist, we're still supposed to do the work of, of an evangelist, and that fulfills our, our ministry. So verses make it pretty clear what Jesus expects us to do. So how do we do it? A um, couple examples, several examples in the Bible. We could be like John the Baptist, and if you look it up in Luke chapter 3, we see that he just was wandering around the neighborhoods and, and, and preaching repentance to anybody that will listen. Um, you know, I mean, it, it, he, just, he 
he just goes. We could be like John. We could just, we could just wander around and, and, and just talk to whoever we, we run into. We could be like Paul in Acts 26. Uh, at this point, he's in front of uh, King Agrippa, and he's just giving them his testimony. He told the king uh, how, he, how Paul used to, to persecute the Christians and how he's on his way to Damascus. And he saw this bright light uh, that blinded him, uh, from, came out of heaven, and he heard the voice of Jesus calling to him. And he, and he just simply told how he, he repented and, and trusted in Christ and, and then, you know, what, he, what was going on since then. So you just give, give your testimony. You could be like Peter in Acts 2. Pa, uh, Peter preached a, a sermon at Pentecost. Um, when he was done, the, the people asked him and the rest of the apostles, they said, what shall we do? And Peter answered and says, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And verse 41 says about 3,000 souls were saved that day. So we could be like Peter. That's another way of telling people. We could be like Philip um, in Acts 8. He heard the angels uh, tell him to go south on the road from Jerusalem to Gaza. And as he traveled, he saw this Ethiopian uh, sitting in his chariot, and he was reading the scripture uh, from Isaiah. Uh, Philip was prompted by the Holy Spirit to go talk to him, and he took that very passage that the Ethiopian was reading, and he showed him how that passage was talking about Jesus. The Ethiopian believed, and a little bit later, Philip baptized him. All right, so if those things aren't your style, maybe you could be like Matthew. In uh, Luke 5, Matthew was uh, called by Jesus to be a disciple. And right after that, Matthew gave a party at his house. And he invited all of his friends, and he invited Jesus. And while they were there, he, invited, he, he introduced his friends to Jesus. Have a party, okay? Uh, maybe you've been to a party lately. Maybe you've got a cookout or something coming up over the 4th of July. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd ask. Is Jesus invited? Okay. You know, will, will, will others hear about him? It could be like Paul and Silas in Acts 16. Uh, of course, to be exactly like them, you'd have to be in jail. Uh, it says, while Paul and Silas were in jail, they were praying and singing hymns, and there's a great earthquake, and the cell doors open, and when the jailer rushed in and saw this, he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul cried out to him in a loud voice, that the prisoners were still there. And the, the jailer fell before Paul and asked, what must I do to be saved? And they answered, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spent some time with the jailer and they spent some time with his family. And they, uh, the scripture says that they all believed and they were all were baptized. Okay, now I know most of us aren't cut out to be street preachers or uh, you know, or another Billy Graham, for that matter. Um, and except for uh, a couple of you, uh, you probably won't find yourself in jail. Um, <laughs> you know who you are. Um, so let me give you another example. Uh, turn with me to John chapter, or, yeah, John 1, 43. <coughs> Excuse me. John 143 says, The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee, and he found Philip, and he said to him, Follow me. Now it says, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. And Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, 
you will see heaven open and angels of, of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. So Jesus called Philip to follow him, and Philip obeyed. Philip was from the same area that Peter and Andrew was, and so then Philip went and found his friend Nathaniel, and he told him about Jesus. And you know, if you look at the scripture, I mean, Philip literally, literally led Nathaniel to, to where Jesus was, and Nathaniel believed. So I know we can be like Philip, because if you've trusted in Christ and you have a friend, you got all the ingredients, okay, that, uh, that the scripture tells us about. But you, you may ask, so, all right, so I, I can do that, but how do I get, how do I get that conversation uh, turned to you know, spiritual matters? How do, I, how do I get on that topic? Okay, well, there's a, there's a few ways of doing that. Um, whether you have a, uh, a, a friend that you know really well or, uh, or maybe you've seen someone you just met, the uh, easiest way to get to know them uh, is to ask questions. Uh, Pastor Roy, you remember about 30-some years ago we attended that home Bible study <coughs> seminar in Stowe, Ohio? Oh, yeah. um, so this, this church in Stowe had, um, they, they presented the, the, these seminars on home Bible studies, and they, and they taught churches and individuals within the church how to do little um, mini Bible studies in their house just last one night. Get get different people in, and um, and it was, it was geared toward evangelism. They they wanted to invite your next door neighbors and 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 friends that weren't believers. Um, but this church had been doing these seminars for several years, and uh, they did several seminars a year. And the seminar that uh, Pastor Roy and I went to um, was their hundredth and a hundredth seminar. So it, they had a big special thing, and they had a lot of people there, and they had a lot of guests. And one guest that they invited back was a fellow from their church who really had the gift of evangelism, but that's not what his job was. He, he was in the oil industry. He was an executive. But he, he literally led thousands of people to the Lord individually. And so he, he spoke to us, and he told how um, recently, and I don't know if it was a year before or, or months before, I can't remember, but he'd, he was invited to speak to a, um, an international convention uh, gathering of evangelists. So they had evangelists from all over the world meet, and he was invited to speak to them. And as he was speaking, he, he asked them a question. He said, how many of you led your uh, bellhop to the Lord last night at your hotel? He had the only hand up. So he spoke, he told how they got on the elevator, uh, bellhop got his luggage, they got on the elevator, and, and the bellhop happened to mention something about a, uh, a fire in a, in a hotel in another city that was recent that, that claimed several lives, uh, including some em employees of the, of the, ho of the uh, hotel, I think. And so he just, he just asked him, he says, you know, we're all gonna, we're all gonna die someday. He said, are, you know, are, are you sure you're gonna be in heaven? And you know, he led the bellhop to the Lord. Then he asked him, he said, how many of you led your waitress at breakfast to the Lord this morning? Again, he had the only hand up. Uh, and he told how he was uh, eating breakfast, or ordered breakfast, and his waitress seemed uh, a little, uh, little sad, a little down. You know, he just noticed that in her face and the way she acted. So he just asked her, so what's, what's, what's going on? You know, what, you know, you seem sad, what, what's going on? And she told him a couple things that's going on in her life. And he just stepped her through the gospel and led her to the Lord. Okay. I always used to pray for opportunities to present the gospel, and I, I really think that's probably wrong. I think, I, I think we need to pray that we recognize opportunities. I think those opportunities are going to be there. We just need God's help. Say, hey, you know, say, like, Terry, go, you know, do this. Uh, um, you know, get in there. Um, a couple things else you can do, you know, if you're if you're driving in the country, you're driving when you got a, an unbeliever with you in the car, you could um, uh, if you're going past a cemetery, a cemetery. Excuse me, just a second. Excuse me. Uh, going past a cemetery, you can ask, uh, what do all what what do most of the tombstones in the, in the cemetery have in common? And they'll tell you, 
well, he usually got a name on him, and he, and he got a, a date of birth and a, and a date of death. And you just point out, you know, there, uh, also many of them, most of them will have this little little dash between the two dates, right? And that little dash represents our life on earth. Um, it may, maybe, maybe that person was 20 years old or, or, or 30 years old or 90 years old when he died, but, but that dash is, is still really small. And that's, that's really kind of fitting because even though it seems like a long time while we're living, um, in, 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 as far as eternity goes, it, it's a very, very small period of time. And so you can point out that, you know, we're going to, you know, you may live a long time on earth, but, you know, at, at, at down the road, you're going to be dead a lot longer than you're going to be alive. Uh, and then you can ask, you know, where are you, where are you going to be spending that eternity? Where, where, where will you be? Uh, I know a, a young, we got a friend of ours in Defiance, Ohio, and he will uh, periodically uh, take rolls of quarters to the local land uh, laundromat and just give them to people uh, that, he, that he had never met. And, you know, he gets thanked a lot, and, uh, uh, of course, and, and some, you know, sometimes people ask him, well, why are you doing this? You know, why are you giving this to me? And he just tries to, <coughs> excuse me, engage people in conversation. And, you know, he, he brings up the gospel, and he, and he you know, brings up uh, heaven and, and, you know, just gets their thoughts on it. And, um, I, you know, I really I don't know if, if anybody that he's talked to has trusted Christ. Um, I think he ha there has, but he's, he's still getting people to think about it. And it could be somebody down the road then will get that chance to, to you know, make that final connection with them. Um, <clears throat> when, when you're talking to somebody, um, in, in maybe there's an event in their life, um, you know, maybe they just graduated or they got promoted or retired. <clears throat> um, you know, and you ask them about that event, and they tell you, <coughs> excuse me, um, you can ask them, <clears throat> ask them a question, and then uh, when they respond, ask a series of questions and, that just, and just say, then what? Okay? For instance, I'd say, uh, okay, so you, you just graduated from high school. I said, well, then, then, then what are you going to do? He says, well, I'm, I'm going to college. I said, okay, then what? Well, and then, I'll, then I'll probably I'll get a job. Well, then what? Well, I don't know. You know I'll, I'll get married. Well, then what? Uh, well, maybe have a couple kids. Well, then what? Well, get, get promoted or get another job. Well, then what? And if you keep going, eventually they're going to say, well, I guess I'll, I'll die. You know, I mean, eventually. You, get, you just keep go, going until you get to that point. <clears throat> and then you just kind of look at them and say, I got one more question. <clears throat> and it's really kind of important. Then what? Okay. What happens after you die? And it just gets them thinking about, you know, where they're going to spend Eternity. All right, I got to take a drink of water. <clears throat> Almost. <clears throat> Todd, I may have to have you finish this one. I don't know. <clears throat> <laughs> um, so anyway, you, you know, you just, you just get to that point where there's where they got to got to make a decision. Okay. Well, they may say, "Hey, I'm going to heaven." How do you know? And, you, and you'll get answers, and we'll talk about that a little bit uh, in a little bit uh, later. Uh, I don't know if anybody have seen any videos of, of Ray Comfort and Kirk Cameron uh, meeting with people. Sandy has. All right. Um, these two are really good at it. Uh, and if you just go on YouTube and, and look at, you know, Google or search for Ray Comfort. Um, a lot of times they're at college campuses, sometimes uh, cities, and they, they just go talk to people on the street. And, you know, one question they ask a lot is, you know, what do you, th what do you think about the afterlife? What do you think, what's going to happen to you after you die? And, and they get responses back. A um, lot of different responses, but a um, lot of the, the you know, non-Christians, uh, you know, really haven't got any idea. And some of the honest ones are, you know, maybe even kind of worried about it and, and not sure, not knowing what's, what's going to happen to them after they die. And then you get, he gets a bunch that will say, uh, well, yeah, I'll, I'll go to heaven. And he'll ask why, and they'll tell him how, you know, because they're, they're a good person. And, um, 
I, I really like his style because, uh, you know, he'll talk to him for a little bit, then he'll ask, he says, well, have you, have you ever stolen anything? And I say, well, yeah, I, I, I did, did a couple times. And he said, well, what do you call a person that steals? You know, that's a thief. And then he says, have you ever told a lie? And they'll admit that, yeah, they've told a lie. And what do you call a person that lies? Well, they're a liar. Um, you ever cheated at, you know, on your taxes or a card game or a board game or, you know, at work or anything, your time slip or anything? And some you know, say, yeah, well, what do you call that person? Well, that's a cheater. So he says, okay, so you think you're good enough to go to heaven, you know, but by your own admission, you're a liaring, cheating, you know, thief. <laughs> uh, he kind of puts it in perspective that, you know, we're not good enough to go to heaven on our own. So he, he, he's, like I said, he's really good at it. I did see an interview uh, one time, uh, some, some people interviewed Ray, and they asked him, says, don't you get uh, nervous or scared when you're talking to people like that? And he, he put it this way, he says, no, not really. He says, you know, a waitress at, uh, at a restaurant, um, she, when she starts, starts to walk up to a table and there's three businessmen sitting there and they've got their briefcase out and papers all over the place. And she doesn't hesitate, say, oh, man, I don't, I, I don't think they're going to want to talk to me. You know, they're, they're really important and they must be really smart, you know, businessmen. I, I, I don't know why they'd want to talk to me. She doesn't think that. She walks up and says, can I take your order? And they stop what they're doing, and they order lunch. So she has what they want and what they need, and so do we. Okay. Um, so how, how do I tell? How do, how do I present the gospel? How, how do I get to that point? Um, as um, pastors fond of saying, uh, let's make it practical. Okay. Uh, a lot of ways to do this talked already once about uh, giving your testimony. Um, all you have to do, uh, I mean, you're, you're the expert of you, okay? All you need to do is tell a little bit about what you were like before you became a Christian, um, how you became a Christian, what, what events took place, and then tell a little bit about what God is doing in your life since then. Okay? Simple, give your testimony. Like I said, you're the expert. Nobody can dispute what happened to you. You could use a gospel tract. Uh, we used to use the four spiritual laws quite a bit. There's a lot of other good ones out there. Uh, I would recommend, if you can, to read through it with them instead of just handing it to them and letting them take it home because a lot of times it gets, you know, thrown away on, on the way home and it never gets to them. But, but whatever, whatever, you, whatever you can do on that, it's easy to use. All the scriptures right there for you. Um, like I said, very easy. There's some pretty good apps for your phone or your iPad. Um, I looked at one uh, the other. I saw another one the other day called G7. The letter G, as in George, seven. I think it stands for the Gospel in seven minutes, maybe. Uh, and I really like that one because it it um, it's kind of customizable for what who you're talking to. If you're talking uh, to a complete stranger, it's got like a little survey. You could ask uh, six or seven questions of the person. And it's and it just it's right on your right on your phone. You could you could walk up to somebody and say, "Hey, I, you know, we're doing a survey from our church, or you know, my youth group, or whatever is doing the survey. I just got a couple of minutes, can answer answer some questions, and and they're just looking at your screen, and you just boom, 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 go right through, and it, then it goes right into into the gospel. Okay. You could uh, have some verses marked in your Bible. You know, maybe you start off with John three sixteen, and then you want to go to another verse, and you just you just Right next to John 3.16, a little footnote of what the next verse is. So if you don't have them all memorized, you know, you just, you just go from, from verse to verse um, so you, you know, to, the, to the next reference. Uh, like I mentioned uh, a few weeks ago, uh, Pastor Todd years ago had us all memorize the Romans Road. Again, it's a group of uh, verses in, all in Romans uh, that that present the gospel. I'll let you look that up on your own, okay? And lastly, how many, how many of you ever heard the wordless book? A few, okay? Um, I think, uh, it, I believe CEF, Child Evangelism Fellowship, developed that, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. But um, all it is, it, it's, a, it's a book. It doesn't have any words in it, okay? Pretty simple. Uh, easy to use. It's really easy to use with kids, but it, it works for adults, too. They can understand it. 
uh, and, and what it is, and you can make your own out of construction paper, or you can make your own using pictures on your phone or whatever, but it's just a group of, 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 picture, of pages that are different colors, okay? So I, I, will, I will take you through this one because it uses some of the verses that um, you will want to use no matter how you, you present the gospel. So, all right. So the first one is um, yellow. And yellow reminds us of heaven. Okay? Streets of gold. Uh, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, all right, that we might have eternal life. God wants us to spend eternity with him in heaven. Okay? That's, that's what yellow is. But there's a problem. So the next page is blue. And um, this is one that I think it was, wasn't in the original wordless book, but got added later. And it's, it's blue because man blew it. Okay? <laughs> God wants us to be in heaven, and we blew it. Uh, Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Each one of us has sin, and we, we fall short of God's perfect, per, perfection. We can't, uh, can't be in heaven with, with sin. Next screen is black, or next page is black, and black reminds us of our sin. Romans 3.23 says the wages of sin is death, and Isaiah 59.2 says that, but your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God. And that separate, you know, that, because of that sin, we are separate from God. That's why it's black. There is good news. Uh, the red page reminds us of Christ's blood. Romans 5.8, again, another one of the Romans Road passages, says, but God shows his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Okay? He paid the price. And because he paid the price, we get the white page, which reminds us of purity. And Romans 10.9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So if we trust in Christ and believe in him and confess him, we get his righteousness. We, we, we get his purity. Okay? And then the last slide is green. And you farmers out there will know that green reminds us of growth. Uh, Colossians 1.10 says, So as to walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Once you become a Christian, he, you, you're going to want to become more like Jesus. And as you read the Bible and listen to good preaching and, and uh, uh, good music, you're going you're, you're gonna, to you know, just continue to, to you, know, you want to walk worthy. You want to be worthy of, of what he's called you to do. Okay. So you present the gospel to some friends and, you know, they, sometimes they respond and they trust Christ, but many times they don't. Um, I, was I was going to use a CPR analogy because a lot of people that, you know, when they give CPR, it doesn't work. That person still dies, uh, probably more often than what it works. But in this case, it, it's not quite the, the it doesn't, that analogy doesn't quite work because even if, even if you present the gospel and they say no or they say they want to think about it, you know, and, and, and you know, think about it for a while, uh, you still planted that seed in their head, okay? And it may be somebody else, you know, weeks or years later, you know, goes over it again with them, and that is when they trust Christ, okay? Uh, There's a song a few years ago, I don't know, it's just like, well, if it takes, I don't know if it's 15 times, you know, you got to hear, you got to hear the gospel a, a number of times, so it's like, you know, maybe you're 15, but maybe you're only number 10, okay? Well, now the next person will be number 11, and pretty soon there's going to be a number 15, and they, 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 you know, it clicks for them. But, you know, you always, you, uh, you, 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 I always used to feel bad, like, okay, the guy, you know, the guy didn't respond to what I wanted him to do, okay? But it's not on me, okay? He's not, he's not rejecting me. He's rejecting God. Um, Bill Bright, the Campus Crusade for Christ, really kind of said it best. He says, witnessing is simply sharing the gospel and leaving the results up to God. Results aren't up to us. You know, God's going to do that change. You know, all, all we are is that, that vehicle or that messenger. Yeah, I, if I had a dartboard up here and gave everybody five darts to throw at it, I, you know, I think probably a few would, would get the bullseye. Okay? 
I'm thought about, uh, I actually saw one at a, at a garage or at a, you know, sale the other day, and I almost got it just to do that. But then I thought, no, there might be a few bullseyes, but I, I'll probably have more than a few darts in the wall and in the piano, okay? Uh, but my point is, how do you get, how would you get better at darts, okay? Uh, one thing you can do is get some training. Somebody knows how to throw them, can show you how to grip it, how to, how to do the proper arm motion, okay? Um, and, 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 and get some instruction. Uh, secondly, you get some practice, okay? The more you practice, the better you get at it. And it's kind of the same way as witnessing, okay? You may need a little training. Maybe you just need a lot of practice. But that first time is usually the hardest, uh, the first few, but you, you get better at it, okay? But there's one other thing you can do. Get closer to your target, okay? If that dartboard was six inches away from me, I could hit the bullseye every time. Okay? And it's the same way as witnessing. If you can get close to your, the, the, you know, the person, uh, it, it's going to make all the, uh, you know, it's going to make all the difference. They're, they're, one, they're, they're, they're going to trust you because they know you and, and, and they know you care about them. Um, it just makes that, it just makes it a whole lot easier. All right, I want to uh, end on a survey here. Um, I want you to, <clears throat> I want you to raise your hand if you became a Christian because on your own, just totally on your own, you decided to pick up a Bible to see what it had to say. Anybody, anybody did that? Nobody, nobody prompted you. Uh, okay, had a couple. Awesome. Uh, raise your hand if you became a Christian because you were driving in your car and you went past one of those billboards that says Christ is the answer or I am the way and the truth and the life and you thought you should check that out. Anybody? Okay. Um, raise your hand if you found a tract in a laundromat or a barber shop or someplace, and you took it home, and uh, you read it, and, and you and you and you and you trusted Christ. Okay, there's nobody there. Um, raise your hand if you were in a city or and there was a street preacher, you know, on a corner, and he was preaching the gospel, just just around, just really giving it out, and okay, nobody there. Uh, anybody flipping through the TV channels and you found somebody preaching and then you stopped and, and listened to that and because of that you trusted Christ? Not doing so good here. Uh, how about you heard a church in your area that was really growing and so you decided to check it. It was totally on your own. Nobody invited you. You just went and checked it out and, and then heard the gospel and, and became a believer. Uh, anybody watching football on Sunday afternoon, you saw that guy in the end zone with the John 316 sign? <laughs> I'm not, you seen him? Okay. Uh, anybody go to like a Billy Graham uh, crusade or uh, uh, any other type of evangelistic crusade and you heard the gospel? You, and you, what, nobody, somebody didn't invite you. You just decided to go on your own. How many of you became a Christian because you had a person spend some time with you, uh, you know, maybe as a parent or a grand, you know, another relative or a youth leader or, or Sunday school teacher or, you know, family friend, but somebody that, that you cared about and they cared about you, spent some time with you and, and they, they showed you, you know, what it meant to be a sinner and how Jesus came to pay the, the price and, you know, they invited you to the stuff. How many became a Christian because somebody else came into your life, okay? Why don't you look around, keep your hands up, just look around. Okay. I mean, can, can you, can you, you know, can you know, you know who that person was? Can you, can you, can you, can you picture their face? Can you see their face? Okay. Got one more question. If I was to ask all the Christians in the world that question can you see their face how many would see your face okay. John 15 8 says by this is my father glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples this is our job this is our job 
here on earth. You can't do it in heaven. Okay? You need to tell others about him. Thank you.